Today I'm going to do an experiment comparing different types of pickup magnets. I've been planning to do this test for a while. Back when my project guitar was an Epiphone Riviera, I purchased a set of P90 pickups from Vintage Vibe Guitars. These pickups are perfect for this test because the bar magnets are easily interchangeable. Now I've since sold that Epiphone Riviera, so I'll be using this Gibson SG. While it's not routed for P90s, it has some nice benefits for this experiment. The humbucker is connected to the circuit using a plug so I can remove it without soldering. And these Steinberger gearless tuners make it relatively easy to take the strings off to swap magnets and then put the exact same strings back on. So I've removed the bridge humbucker and temporarily taped the P90 in place. I've snaked the pickup lead through to the control cavity, but I didn't actually connect it up to the SG circuit. I just alligatored in a separate jack and grounded it to the bridge. So we'll be hearing the raw pickup sound with no volume or tone knob involvement. Now I'm no expert on pickup design, and I'm not a physics and magnetism professor, but I'll quickly summarize how a guitar pickup works and why these different magnet types might have an impact on the sound. The guitar pickup consists of an assembly called a bobbin, which is wrapped in a long continuous coil of magnet wire, with some pole pieces running through it. Now the pole pieces are either rod magnets, as in a Tele or a Strat, or conductive steel rods in contact with bar magnets lower in the assembly, as with this P90. Now this particular pickup is scatter wound with 8500 turns of 43 gauge magnet wire around the bobbin with a DC resistance of 9.1 K ohms. The magnetic field from the magnets in the pickup extend out into the space around the pickup. And when a string containing iron or nickel vibrates within that magnetic field, the field will vibrate with the same frequency as the string. Now one of the wonders of our universe is that when a magnetic field moves near a coil of wire, an electric current is generated in the wire. This is the same principle used in an electric generator. Now as our guitar string vibrates within the pickup's magnetic field, the electrons in the coil will oscillate back and forth, generating an alternating current, which is our guitar signal. I have a set of four magnet types to try today, Alnico 2, 3, and 5, and Ceramic 8. An Alnico magnet consists of aluminum, nickel, and cobalt, while the ceramic or ferrite magnets are composed of iron oxide and strontium carbonate. Now the different magnet types have different field strengths. Alnico 3 is the weakest, Alnico 2 is slightly stronger, and Alnico 5 is about five times as strong as those, and ceramic 8 is stronger still. A stronger magnetic field should result in a higher signal output, more aggressive tone, and sharper attack. But also, a stronger magnetic field will have more interaction with the string itself, especially if the strings are very close to the pole pieces, and that magnetic pull on the strings can result in reduced sustain. We'll see if we can actually hear these differences in the recordings. To change the magnets on these Vintage Vibe Guitars P90s, you just remove these three screws on the back and lift away the back plate. Then the bar magnets slide right out. When removing them, you gotta go slow and pay attention to the magnet polarity so you can put the new ones back in the same way. Vintage Vibe Guitars marks these magnets with a color on the north side indicating the magnet type. These ones are red for Alnico 5. And this pickup has both magnets with the north side facing in to the pole pieces. For the playing examples, I'll try to control everything to be as similar as possible with each example, so the only significant difference is the magnets being used. It'll be the same pickup body, the same pickup position and pole piece height, same strings and string height, same amp and recording settings. The only thing I can't really control perfectly is my playing. I'm not good enough to turn in the exact same performance each time, but I'll do my best. So I'll play a few different riffs from mellow to punchy, but it's not so much what I play that matters as listening for differences between the recordings with different magnet types. And I'll edit the video to place the recordings side by side for easy comparison. I'll be recording direct from my Line 6 Helix with three different amp models, the Fender Twin, the Vox AC30, and a Marshall JCM800, all through the same 4x12 cab plus a little bit of spring reverb and mic'd with a ribbon mic. I'll put this test preset up on my blog. Incidentally, since I started using the Helix last year, I ended up selling my amps. I just wasn't using them anymore. I think the Helix models are amazingly realistic and responsive, and I love the versatility. Now with all that out of the way, let's get started. <laughs> Thank you. 
information on this and other projects, visit my blog at planetz.com and at facebook slash John Planet Z.